the blue mine. <laughs> Prisons are very interesting places. Interesting in an often terrible way. Australia is no exception. We may not have a prison population as high as other countries, but we certainly have some interesting convict characters. I mean, think about it. How crazy do you have to be to go to prison in a former prison colony? The answer is moderately. As like every other aspect of our society in Australia, the most prized aspect of anything, whether it's uh, politics or prisoners, complacency is king. In the book A Tumultuous Life, the author Brian Burke spent some time in Wurraloo Prison. Here are some stories that he conveyed in his book. There was one man who appeared quite fit due to steroid use, but had developed what he described as bitch tits along the way, which he then showed the author of the book. This man wanted to get a license to collect rare birds. Why was this man struggling to get a license? Well, for the same reason he was in prison. Being a massive bird nerd, this prisoner, who for the sake of convenience I will call Birdman, was quite interested in a mythically rare parrot that had cinnamon feathers. The parrot was essentially the manaphy of parrots. Not technically the thing of legends, but nevertheless the thing of rumour. So what did this bird collector do to get his shiny parrot? No, not the Masuda method. He caught two common green parrots and proceeded to meticulously paint each feather a presumably pretty cinnamon colour. He did a very convincing job colouring the birds and managed to convince a bird dealer that they were in, in fact those 1 in 8,192 birds and snatched them up for several grand. He then sold those parrots to a rich purthling named John Roberts. The parrots did not last very long in this man's aviary, however, because birds apparently molt their feathers, which caused a very unhappy John Roberts and, by proxy, a highly pissed bird dealer. And that is the story how Birdman was found in Wurraloo Prison. When the author of the book mentioned molting to the prisoner and the problem that it would have caused the plan Birdman enacted, Birdman said, Ah, you're really smart. No wonder you're from here. I never thought of that. There was one story of a very enterprising entrepreneur who came up with an idea even better than Bezos's consumer worker idea. This man was an audio specialist who sold people sound systems for their luxury cars. Two weeks later, the man would steal those sound systems back from the cars and when the customer realised it was stolen, he would return to this businessman, somehow had an identical sound system ready to sell. He refitted the sound system he had stolen to the car he stole it from and got double his money from the ordeal, while the customer usually had insurance to pay for the replacement. As you can imagine, this business model did not work out so well when one day on the job, the sound system man took back his car and sound system only to find the customer he sold it to placed a tracker on a sound system. Likely because the frequent amount of sound systems being stolen in the area. So knowing the inevitable, he drove directly to the police station and came a fine addition to the Wurraloo prisoner collection. A bank robber and heavy amphetamine user, to really no surprise for Perth, came to Wurraloo prison. How was he caught? Well, through the same reason most of us would suffer, anxiety. The heavy use of amphetamines didn't help this man as paranoia became more and more prevalent in his life. When he went to hold up a shopping centre by taking a taxi, holding up the bank and then taxiing home again, he realised on the taxi ride home that he dropped a letter from Social Security at the bank, which had his name and details on it. So, ever cautious, he went back to the crime scene, which is swarmed by police, and picked it back up. The robber was not convinced that he was scot-free though. He eventually developed an odd fear in his head that the police placed the letter in front of him on the ground and intending not to arrest the young robber, but to shoot him dead. So going to, of course, East Perth's major crime squad, he confessed to robbing the bank. The likely quite amused policemen told him to piss off and said that they were busy catching serious criminals Not wankers like you Determined to turn in, he returned with his father and his gun 
and thus taken as a more serious criminal than less a wanker, getting sentenced 10 years without parole. These prison stories, you're never going to not be entertained with Australian prison stories, or frankly prison stories anywhere. You know, the, those fictional shows like Orange is the New Black and um, most business shows because I imagine living in a cubicle is probably the same as being in a prison. Those shows are not exaggerations. In fact, they are quite the opposite. They are tame in comparison to real stories of prisoners and how they got into prison. I mean, most of them. The book did describe a lot of people who were just there because they couldn't be bothered paying fines. In fact, that was most of the prison population at the time. Just people who took a bit of weed and couldn't be bothered paying the fine and now they're just mingling with cold hard killers. No biggie. Anyway, that's all for this video. Ciao. Bear witness as you see me magically transform from the person of a different video to a person of a new video. Wow, I just changed uniform, so it's like it's a different day, not exactly 15 minutes after I recorded a previous video. Yippee, let's go.